Hosting a guest in self-isolation or quarantine can be a completely different ballgame compared to hosting your average guests. These guests have different needs and you have to cater to them in a completely different way. One quick disclosure off the top, I am not talking about hosting guests who have a suspected or confirmed case of COVID. Instead, I'm going to be talking about guests who have to self-isolate as a precaution because they've traveled from a hot zone or are entering a country that has a mandatory self-isolation period for international travelers. Because as we talked about in my last video, hosting a guest with a suspected or confirmed case of COVID-19 is against the Airbnb rules. Welcome to another episode of Airbnb Uncovered. I'm Matt, the creator of AirbnbUncovered.com and Airbnb Superhost. On this channel, I uncover some of the best kept hosting secrets, as well as share with you everything that I've ever learned after hosting over 3,000 guests. My tips, tricks, and best practices are all focused on helping new hosts earn more revenue, attract the best guests, and achieve Superhost status faster. So if you're new to hosting on Airbnb, this is the right channel for you. Hosting guests who must self-isolate for 14 days is a great source of business during the pandemic. In fact, I'm sure that I've hosted at least one such guest every month since the pandemic began, and in some guests, I'm sh in some months, I'm sure that I hosted more than that. And these guests don't likely have COVID, but they're often required not to see anyone during their self-isolation period nonetheless. This means that you can be almost assured that you don't have to worry about any parties or unwanted visitors to your home. Let me first start by explaining what a mandatory self-isolation period is. Many countries around the world have imposed a mandatory quarantine period for people entering the country from a different one. They're doing this to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Countries like Canada, the UK, Italy, Germany, Austria, India, and many more are all requiring international travelers to self-isolate, which means that they cannot interact with the general public whatsoever until their self-isolation period is over. The self-isolation period varies by countries, but generally it's between 7 and 21 days. Often the self-isolation period applies to everyone in the household where the traveler is staying. So, in many cases, these travelers are looking for private accommodation to complete their mandatory self-isolation period in an effort to reduce inconvenience and the potential spread of the coronavirus on their loved ones. The thing is that these guests cannot have any contact with the outside world, and this can present some challenges and opportunities for you as a host. So let me go through them one by one. The first thing is that if you withhold the exact address of your listing and only release it just prior to check-in, you will likely need to provide this information up front, since the guest is likely going to need to give the location and address of where they'll be self-isolating to the Border Patrol agents in order to gain entry into the country. Next, you'll need to provide a self-check-in process. If, you already have, if you're already set up with one of these, then this alleviates one of the biggest hurdles right off the bat. Having this feature already noted on your Airbnb listing can also help attract self-isolating guests, since these guests are supposed to minimize any contact with the outside world. And plus, you want to keep yourself safe and prevent the spread of COVID. Another great feature in your listing to note in your listing is that you have high-speed internet and cable TV. As I'm sure you can imagine, things are going to get pretty boring for your self-isolating guests if they're not allowed to leave your home for a period of 7 to 21 days. You also need to anticipate that this guest may need you to supply them with food and other necessities. Again, in many cases, these guests are not even permitted to exercise outside in public, let alone get groceries or medications from the pharmacies or grocery stores. In Canada, the only reason a person may break self-isolation is in the event of a medical emergency. The need for the guest to have everything delivered presents an opportunity for you to offer some extra services. 
doing the grocery shopping, picking up medications, and other odd errands that the guests may need but be unable to do. You can certainly charge for these services. To date though, I haven't because the grocery stores that offer order online and pick up in store are close to my listings, so it really hasn't taken me much time to lend a, hand, a helping hand. But this does bring up a good point about communication with your self-isolating guests before their arrival. Every country has different rules and those rules can sometimes be presented in confusing ways. Before your guest arrive, arrives, ask a few questions about their plans while they're self-isolating. Have they, have they already arranged to have everything delivered? Will somebody else, perhaps a close friend or a relative, be looking after getting essentials into your house? If so, do you need to provide access to them too? If not, will they need help from you? It's also helpful for you to provide the average lead times for grocery delivery or order online pickup in store. I recently hosted a guest who thought that he could simply order his groceries that morning and then have me pick them up an hour later. Sadly, it doesn't work like that in Toronto. It's just too busy. Instead, he had to eat all the items in my welcome basket for breakfast and lunch. Look, I'm not saying that you need to be the enforcer of your country's self-isolation rules, or that you need to know every single last detail about how self-isolation works. Instead, it's probably good for you to have just a general idea of what's required and knowledge of where the official information is available for your guests to do their own research. If you have agreed to help your guests get their groceries and medications or uh, anything else they might need, then you need to take a few precautions to protect yourself as the stand-in delivery person. Ensure that you have zero contact with your self-isolating guests. Agree that you'll drop off whatever supplies are needed in front of the door and that you'll message once everything is dropped off. It's very important that they do not open the door while you're there as coronavirus can hang in the air for up to 24 hours. With regards to payment, you can use the Resolution Center or PayPal or some other form of payment service like email, uh, Interact Email Transfer. But do not update your price on the reservation with the additional costs of groceries or other necessities because that increased cost will be subject to the Airbnb service fee on both your side and your guest's side. On checkout, I recommend blocking your calendar for at least 24 hours and for the full three days if you can. 24 hours because that's the longest COVID can stay in the air and three days because that's the longest the coronavirus lives on a surface. If neither of these options are available to you, then you need to take every precaution to keep yourself and your staff safe. Question, have you hosted a self-isolating guest? If so, tell us how it went in the comments below. Hosting guests who are self-isolating upon arrival to your country is in fact a noble thing to do. You're not only helping to reduce the spread of COVID-19, but you're also being a responsible and reliable member of your community, since you've got the protocols in place to help keep everyone safe. Over the past six months, hosting self-isolating guests has been good business for me. When done correctly, by minimizing in-person contact to arranging to have necessities delivered and finally following the proper cleaning and sanitization protocols. Hosting these guests can really be a real win-win for you and your self-isolating guests. Be sure that you have high-speed internet, cable, and self-check-in listed as amenities on your listings to maximize your chances of securing these types of reservations. And remember to be prepared to lend a hand to get your guests set up with the necessary supplies for their self-isolation period. And hey, it could just add a few more dollars into your pocket. Thanks again for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to show you why I think that hosting self-isolating guests is such a great way to drive business on Airbnb. If I did that, then please give this video a thumbs up and rate it highly if you're asked. 
I'll be back next week with another tip, trick, or best practice for new Airbnb hosts. In the meantime, check out my other videos to accelerate your Airbnb listing. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to click on the notification bell. Bye for now.